Here we're looking at the power meter or power supply and we're running a mag drive silo configuration magnum. As you can see we're running at 13 volts and our total amperage from the power supply is at 11 amps. That's 11 amps, 13 volts, 11 amps. Now we're going to go over to the unit itself and take a look at the unit. And we'll go up here and we'll zoom out a little bit. And there is a mag drive magnum silo configuration. You'll be able to see it here. And we'll look at it. As you can see, there are four canisters. One, two, three, and four. Here's all your anodes. Up here is your water control, your bus for your water control, which controls off of your solenoid valves, which there are one, two, three, and four. And if you look at them this way, you'll be able to see them all. There's four of them. And of course, they're all controlled by the four level sensor switches, which there's one here, one there, one out there, and one out there. And of course, here are your fill and view ports across the four cells. And of course, to get at the water, you're going to use here a small pump, all right, which is 12 volt DC, which has an outbound line, which comes around here, and it feeds all of the solenoids, each and every one of them. You can see how that all works right there. And of course, as we go down here, we take a look at the side. You can see it's quite involved with the wiring. It's all tied and looped together. And if we come around here and we go down, we look underneath, you can see the cathode array down on the bottom right there. Now what I've done now is, as you saw, we were running at 12 volts and 10 amps. But we're using a PWM, which is right here. And I'll remove the lid from the PWM so you can see it. And there it is, right there. Now that PWM is set right now, so with an input voltage of 12 volts and 10 amps, we're now going to go to the multimeter, and we're going to show you where that's hooked up, and we're going to read what's actually going across the gen itself. Now here is a test lead, which goes up to the anode, right there. You can see it. And of course, this anode is common with all of the other anodes. They're all hooked together in one harness. So they're common anodes and common cathodes. And of course, the cathode wire is down here, which you can see it connects up to the cathode, and they're all common from underneath. But we follow that down, and it takes us over here to the meter. Now, with 12 volts in, actually 13 volts in at 10 amps, now we'll turn this on, and we'll see the actual voltage with the PWM on. And right now, we're running at 4.7 volts, 4.8 volts, with 10 amps over four cells. So since the cells are all hooked in parallel, and on the anodes and the cathodes, as you saw, and the amperage is going in, if we turned around and we looked at that and we divided it down at 4.8 volts, each of those cells would be running, oh, roughly about, let's say one and a quarter, round it off to five volts. That'd be one and a quarter volts per cell. And if we have four cells and 10 amps, well, we're looking right now at two and a half amps at one and a quarter volts per cell. That's what we're running right now. And if we follow this hose all the way over here, running at that setting, you can see right now we're going from one or from zero, we're bouncing up almost to three liters per minute pulsing is what we're looking at right now. And that's really not too bad, figuring we're only running 4.7 volts and 10 amps total across four cells. So, you know, if you broke that down, it's one and a quarter volts per cell and roughly about uh, two and a half amps a cell. And we're pulsing from zero to three liters a minute. Now, we could turn that up and go higher if we wanted to, no big deal. But here we'll go back to the power supply. And as you can see, there we are. 
at our 10 volts, or uh, 10 amps, excuse me, 10, 11 amps. And there's our input voltage right there. I'll zoom in on it. There it is, 13 volts, 10, 11 amps. And right here, as you can see, we're just hitting the three liter a minute mark pulsating. And we go over to the unit, which is right over here, as you can see it. And then down here to the multimeter, that's 4.8 volts. And now we'll take a temperature probe, the infrared one, and we'll see if we can get a light on it. And see if we can get down on it, and we'll shoot the outbound gas temperature. And there you go. Our outbound gas temperature is 91 degrees. On the first cell, now we'll go to 82 degrees on the second cell. 83 degrees on the third cell. And 79 degrees on the fourth cell. But as you can see, the max is 81 on cell 4. And the max is 89 on cell 1. So reading across the four cells, we're looking at a difference of about 8 degrees. And this has been running for several hours right now. So that will give you some idea. But this is what it looks like. And I'll zoom out on it. And you'll be able to see it. This unit is going to a customer in Florida. They'll be getting it soon. It's going to ship on Monday. It'll come with mounting brackets and everything else. But that's the mag drive, Magnum silo configuration right there. And that comes with a one gallon tank, the instructions, the mounting brackets, of course the PWM which is right there as you can see it. That's totally adjustable. And the way you fill these up is you don't charge each cell individually. You put your potassium hydroxide into a gallon jug of distilled or filtered water. You mix it, we give you the instructions, and then you just pour that into your actual reserve tank and you let the system pump it in and fill it up automatically. And then you take the balance of it, top it off, and then you put the remaining leftover water, which is about a quart, you can put away and then you can use that to top off your tank you know anytime you need to top it off but that's about what it looks like for a mag drive magnum silo conversion and here's the other side of it which you never got a chance to see is right there and that's what it looks like right there there's the top of it So as you can see, it's quite involved. There's quite a bit of wiring, a lot of hosing, a lot of network stuff here to put it all together to make it work. And as you can see, as we go across, here we are at roughly 4.7, 4.8 volts, and we're bouncing from 0, 2.5, 3 liters. And that's a 4.7 to 4.8 volts going into the unit at only 10 amps with a 13 volt input circuit through a PWM. So that's about it. So I hope this was informative and it was a bit entertaining for you. Other than that, we thank you much for your time and you take care of yourself and we'll see you again and talk to you later in the next video. Thank you and bye bye.